dealing with CPQ, you might want to translate your products. Translating your products and your product descriptions are something you will need to do when uh, uh, selling your products in different countries or selling in a country with uh, multiple languages to be supported. Let's take a look. If I click the document here, I uh, want, I expect an English document and everything in English because my uh, con contact person is English speaking. So let's take a look. I click the button and yes, indeed. So I have my two cars here. So this is what I'm selling, two cars. And I have a short description and a long description of those two cars nicely in English as my uh, um, as my contact expects it. Now, when we change our contact to, for instance, a German contact, let's call him uh, Heinrich Muller, who is uh, sounding pretty German. So you see that this changed, changes to German. So this is a formula field depending on our contact. And if I now click the button, I hope to get a German uh, document, so uh, everything in German, and indeed all our translations are here now in German. So everything is translated, all of our product uh, descriptions and our product uh, long descriptions are all translated. We didn't do this with multiple fields in this case, we actually used CPQ translations or localizations as you want to call it um, from the CPQ package. So let's take a look. We have our car, as you can see here, and I have some specification that I want to put on my uh, um, that I want to put on my uh, document, of course, and I have also uh, yeah some uh, short description on my uh, my car. As you can see here, we are trying with different uh, types. We are supporting every different type of translations, but this is not the type of translations we want for this demo. In this demo, we're actually going to use. CPQ translations or localizations, as you want to call them. We have selected a, ger a language, German, and we have, of course, on our product, every field that sits here. So what we are translating here is our product description and our specifications. As you can see, both are translated um, in the German language, and it's looking quite good. And I uh, I have now an English uh, translation and I have a German translation. If I want to change, uh, add French ones and Spanish ones and Italian and Dutch and all of the different languages that you want to support or can support, not a problem. Um, this will all be uh, uh, be done or supported without any issue. So. This is how we use it. We go from our translation in the language that uh, we have selected to translate. Then uh, we can choose from our quote directly uh, to, uh, to use the, uh, the language of our customer or the language of our user. In this case, we have used the language of our customer. In most cases, it makes us mo most sense because you, of course, want to send out a document in the language of your customer. So, how did we uh, connect to this locale, as we uh, as we call it? This is easily done by the editing page. So, on our component, on our PDF Butter component, we have what we call a locale, and this locale is actually the primary field locale. If I delete this and I leave it empty, it will actually take the locale of the current user. So, if you do not want to have uh, do not want to use the locale of your customer, just leave this empty and select the locale of your uh, current user. So in this case, I do want it. So I have the API name of my locale field, which is the uh, formula field that's here on my page layout. Okay, so we now know how to configure uh, the system to take into account the locale that you want to use. We now know where the translations are coming from, from the translations uh, screen that is linked to uh, from our product. So next up is how to actually configure PDF Butter to take these translations into account in the current language, in the current locale that we actually want. To do that, we are going to our doc config in uh, PDF Butler, and in our doc config, we define an actionable. This actionable can be done on the level of a pack, 
or on the level of a doc config. That's up to you. So if you want to use a pack, for instance, sending out it through email, or you want to use a pack for uh, um, for generating multiple documents in parallel, that's uh, perfectly fine. Now, if you just want to generate one document, you can actually define an actionable on this doc config. Let's take a look at the CPQ translations uh, actionable. So we called it CPQ translations. Uh, it has to run um, after the data sources are retrieved, but before the document is generated. So this means it will actually take all of the information, the data that was uh, selected to be sent to PDF Butler. And in that informa information, it will actually change all of the fields or take all of the fields, use all of the fields, the data that's actually required. How to do that? Well, we just define our uh, class here. So then in this case, it's actionable CPQ localizations. So uh, this is how you name the class. Uh, the class has to be uh, spelled correctly. You will retrieve this class by installing a managed package that you can uh, that you can get from our support department. So if you mail that you require CPQ localizations or translations to support at pdfbutter.com, they will uh, send you back a link, and this link you can just install as an unmanaged package. Why an unmanaged package? Uh, because maybe you want to change some of the code, maybe you want to use the code for something else, whatever. We've, uh, we support that, uh, of course, and we give that in open source to you so you can handle it any way you want. If you do not want to change anything, the package is completely self, uh, um, self-supporting, means you can just install this on production. It has test classes, everything is there. You do not have to do anything. On this uh, package, you also have to indicate which data source actually uh, contains the data that you want to translate. It means that in this case, we are uh, retrieving our cars that we are selling. So that's our main lines or main quote lines that we can uh, use. And from these main quote lines, it will actually retrieve the data coming from our CPQ uh, translations uh, um, that we have filled in over here. So. Uh, to recap, what do we actually need to, uh, to do all of this? We need, of course, to set in our component that we want to uh, use or not use uh, some custom localizations depending on our customer. If we are not using it, it will be dependent on our user. We, of course, need translations in CPQ translations. Uh, so we have done uh, all of this setup. Uh, if the translations are just uh, fields, uh, text areas or even rich text fields, all of that is not a problem. We support all of those. And then you just have to define an actionable on our uh, doc config for, uh, for this matter. So we have now all of the different steps. Let's take a look at our doc config because this is just very simple. We take our main line items data source and we actually have a very simplified document that we can uh, that we can use and I will show you right here. So our document just has this table. It has our model, a short description and a long description. In our uh, overview, we just say, well, we want the description and we want the uh, specifications from our uh, product uh, overview. And well, the system is smart enough to know that actually dependent on the, uh, the locale that we have set on the user or the customer locale, it will actually just fill in the translated fields into these fields automatically. So when these fields are selected, inside our query, it will just grab all of these fields and replace them with the translations coming from the CPQ translations. So very easy, straightforward setup. No if and else's to define which is the language. And if this is the language is Dutch, take the Dutch field. If the language is French, take the French field. This is a very straightforward setup. Nothing has to be done. Nothing has to be, uh, uh, no if it's and else's have to be written. So in this case, very straightforward to get all of your uh, uh, translations inside your document. So uh, when this is set up, then it's very easy. Just click the button. The system will get the translations, overwrite them in the selected data, and make sure that all of the translations are nicely filled in, in inside your document. That's it.
That's how easy it can be to do support CPQ localizations or translations.